Father, we hope you've heard our praise already. We ask now for your presence. Not a passing presence. Not that you're capable of that. We don't want you here because it's Sunday and it's your house. Although it is and it is. We want you here because we know we need you. And if we haven't come by that knowledge yet, Father, convince us again today of our need. Our desperate need for you in our lives. Not on the weekend, not on the big days, but every moment. For every decision and every choice. And every hurt and every joy. We need you. Fill this space to the bursting. Do the same with our head and our hearts. Every limb, every digit. Claim us as your own again today. Join us as we worship you. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. And we gather here. Amen. Goodness, thank you. Choir, that was gorgeous. What a, what a lead into a time of worship. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Boone. I am glad you are here. Um, if you are visiting with us, you are welcome always. Uh, make yourself a regular and not a visitor. In the meantime, if you have any need to communicate uh, with the staff or the church, have any questions, you'll find some cards in the, front, in the back of the pew in front of you. You can fill those out and drop them in the offering plate a little later as it goes by. Um, I have someone who's going to help me welcome other folks who recognize that we have students. Come on up, Natalie. Uh, Natalie's going to share for just a minute with you, and then I'll be back. Hey, guys. So my name is Natalie. Um, this is my senior year at Appalachian, and I was just asked to share a little bit about um, what I love about this church and what I love about the college group here. Um, and I'm going to try to make it short because I could literally stand up here for like hours and talk about how much I love this church. Um, so I first got involved here um, because I was involved at a First Baptist in my hometown, which is Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and so I did a little church shopping when I first came up to Boone and um, really wanted to find a place to get plugged in. And this place really felt like home to me for a few different reasons, you know, the way that the um, services were kind of set up, but also the involvement outside of just a Sunday morning um, really helped me to get plugged in outside of just coming to worship on a Sunday morning, but um, also like the church staff here has been a really, really great resource for me, uh, Curtis, Roy, um, and I really feel like they've opened me up to thinking about um, how my faith plays into a lot of different aspects of my life, um, my relationships with my friends, um, with significant others, <laughs> with, um, you know, issues that are happening in society today, I feel like they really challenge me and ask me really important questions about how my relationship with Christ plays into other aspects of my life because that's how I'm supposed to live. Um, and I feel like just having a place to go on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night and really just like dive deeply into questions about my faith and that I can come with questions and uncertainties and that I'm still accepted for where I'm at um, I think that's been one of the best things about this church for me. Um, so I would love to continue to talk to anyone about why I got involved, because um, I literally could stand up here about you know every aspect of this church. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I am the leader of the college group for the Wednesday night meetings and things like that. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask me. I am totally open. We'll answer any question you have. Um, but I love this church, and it's become a really, really great resource for me on this campus um, just for the past four years, and I hate that I have to leave it in the next year, so I'm just trying to get as much out of it as I can, but thank you, First Baptist Boone. Thanks, Natalie. You've given as good as you've gotten. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Natalie recently availed herself of a ministry we have here, Watch Care. Many churches have that, Watch Care membership. We hope that students who leave here and go off find home, homes away from home, whether that be East Tennessee or wherever they go. Um, so we try to be that for you as, as you come here also. So there's many ways to plug in. I'm Curtis. I'm the college minister here. So students, 
find Natalie, find me, find somebody who looks like they know what they're talking about, good luck, and uh, ask us some questions. Another way we greet each other is by passing the peace of Christ. Um, let's do that now. Say hello to the folks around you. All right, if you would find your way back to your seat, I'd like to ask um, any of our rising second graders, any of our rising second graders to come down front now to join us for just a special presentation. You can come uh, hang out right here with us, stand beside Miss Karen right here. I've got a quick verse uh, that I want to read. This is in Deuteronomy. It's uh, verse 6. Um, and it is, um, excuse me, chapter 6, verses uh, 4 through 9. Um, it's known as the Shema. Um, oh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. Write, on them, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. We are called in Scripture, we are called in Scripture to involve God in everything that we do, all aspects of our lives. Um, and as you'll hear in my children's story a little bit later, God loves us ultimately, and He wants us to be a, a, a part of um, what we do in church as we worship. And so, Charlie, um, this Bible signifies a couple things. One, it's a gift from your church family to you, saying that we are so glad that you are a part of this church family. The second thing is it shows and represents that it is time for you to come and join us in a time of worship with God. And so now you have your own Bible that you can look through and you can read so that you um, can begin to develop your relationship with God. And we, if you look out, your church family, are super excited about being able to work along that process with you. And we thank you for being a part of this family.
If you would like to follow along with our scripture or our epistle lesson this morning, you'll find it on page 922 in the Pew Bible. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, I would like to invite all the children to come down and join me here at the front. Come on down, you can sit with me right here. Good morning, guys. How are y'all? Good to see you this morning. So first of all, I think the important thing, some of you may have seen me around a little bit. But you may not know who I am yet. My name is Michael, and I'm the new associate pastor here. And one of my favorite things in the whole world to do during worship time is to spend a few moments with you guys and talk a little bit about something that, a, a, a story or something that we're going to do. So I want to show you this. This was a gift to me. Those of you who can read, what does it say? I love you, Daddy. It was a gift from my, my daughter a long time ago, and I keep it in my office. Um, what is that right there? When you see a heart, what do you typically think of? Love. So who are, who are a couple people that you think of when you think of love? Your parents. Okay. Who else? Your brothers, your pets, your family. Right. Um, how many of you think of the church? Sometimes, yeah. Well, what we want is you to think of the church as a bigger family. You heard me say that when Charlie got his Bible, right? Because they are here to love you and to take care of you and to help you grow in your relationship with God. But there's one more really, really important person that we haven't said when we think about love. Good God. And God loves us so much. And over the next few years, you're going to find out as you learn more about faith, you're going to learn what and how much God loves you. But what we do here in church to say thank you to God for loving us so much, does anybody know? What do we do to say thank you? We praise, right? And we worship. And I, I think you were actually saying pray, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay, because that's part of it. Prayer is part of worship, as you heard this morning, right? Reading the Bible, like we gave Charlie his Bible this morning, is part of worship. And then singing is part of worship, right? And so what we want to do, I want to introduce you to another important person, is we want to start, for those who are in pre-K, that's four- and five-year-olds, our first graders, and our kindergartners, we want to start teaching you how to worship. And so if you'll look right over here, see, you're in kindergarten. That's awesome. Has it been good so far? Good. That's pretty. Look over here. See the lady in the kind of the pink and white? 
That's Miss, Miss Betsy. And she today, those of you who are in four and five, kindergarten, first grade, are going to go with her to something we call children's worship. And she's going to start talking to you about how to worship today. And she's got a story. Yes, ma'am. Very nice. First grade, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So I want to do something real quick before we break up. She's going to go over to this door, and you're going to line up quietly behind her. So let's do this, though. Let's pray before we go, okay? Let us pray. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for loving us, and we want to worship you because we know that that is what you want, and we are so, so grateful. Is in your son's name that we pray this prayer. Amen. All right, we'll get up and we'll go over here with Miss Betsy.
May that phrase soak into your spirits as God mingles, God's spirit mingles with yours. You are loved for who you are, right where you are. The ensemble that sang for us and encouraged us in worship just now is the ensemble that leads us in a worship experience each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock out in the prayer garden as weather allows and then as the season unfolds uh, in the chapel. So that's another opportunity of worship that I invite you to be a part of. We want to continue this experience by praying for one another, truly lifting prayers to a holy God that meets us and hears us as we pray. And I invite you to audibly share a name or a word or a thought or a prayer that's on your heart, lifted to God as we corporately pray, and then I will close our prayer together. May we continue to pray for Texas. Uh, God bless Texas. And may we lift the people of Texas to a God to hold Texas in their hands. You share a prayer. I will close our time together. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, are we asking for too much? You say no. In your mercy, we acknowledge you're big and we are small. For your mercy is the source of love that empowers us and enables us in relationship with you, with ourselves, and enables us to love others. Mercy evaporates love that is selfish and love that indulges and love that puffs it itself up. May we humble ourselves in prayer before you, O oh God, bringing our sick and our hurting and our grieving in need of touch, in need of healing, in need of grace and comfort. Especially this day, we pray for the people of Texas as they weather a storm and those that gather around them to minister to their needs. We ask that you protect their homes and their families be with those that have already experienced incredible loss and the loss of life. We pray for peace in our world, and may we love our neighbor as you have loved us. Oh God, accept this worship and continue to speak to us however you choose to speak. And we ask this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
Thank you, choir. Faith, thank you. Beautiful piano accompaniment to that beautiful, beautiful song and anthem. I hope you heard those words. There are many college students with us and are becoming a part of our community and our neighborhood and one of the college experiences that my wife Robin enjoyed uh, was being able to to be in a, a group, an ensemble and at Carson Newman and the piano player was Mary McBee who is Mary McDonald which is the person that put that music together that you sang so beautifully. So I hope you heard the words, Jesus loves me. You may have been asleep for the past month or the past year really, but especially the past couple of weeks if you didn't realize or know that we, we had an eclipse this week. Everybody know that? Did you, anybody catch that or know that or notice that? Uh, and it was, it just happened this go round that it was going to come across uh, our home, America. It was going to come across the states of America, and we would be able to see totality if we got in the right place and the right spot. Uh, it was such an incredible event, the great American eclipse, that moon pies sold out in many towns across the South. We were going to have a party, and so you couldn't find a moon pie in most grocery stores, and the Capri Suns even sold out. You couldn't even wash a moon pie down with Capri Sun because we were going to have a party with the Eclipse coming to town. There were Eclipse glasses and Eclipse t-shirts and a Eclipse apps to find out how to best view the Eclipse and what in the world was this total Eclipse all about. It was quite a party. I was in Asheville, North Carolina for the Eclipse because I was able on short notice to get doctor's appointments on the day of the eclipse because so many canceled their doctor's appointments I was able to squeeze in and get in and so it was quite an event as the doctor you know would check me out and check over me and say well, now we'll hurry out and get outside in just a minute but after all of that we went to Black Mountain Robin and I to get some ice cream on the way home as we're known to do and this particular ice cream stand ice cream shop right there in Black Mountain had the eclipse Sunday right there on the neon on the sign for everybody to see and, of course, I got my just little single dip of chocolate vanilla swirl that I always get. But a person behind me ordered the Eclipse Sunday, and you're not going to believe what it was. There was a moon pie on the bottom. There was two dips of vanilla, two dips of chocolate. We're not done yet. A moon pie on the top, and just a little dip of ice cream with whipped cream, and then chocolate sauce poured all over. The Eclipse Sunday, I almost turned my cone back in <laughs> and said, I'll have one of those. A party, it was quite a party, this excitement and this, this, this all looking in the same direction, at the same spot, to see this awesome eclipse by the moon of the sun. In the days before people understood, in the days before people understood the orbits of the sun and the moon, they had no idea what caused this eclipse, what caused this darkness, what caused the earth just to become dark in the middle of the day. What in the world caused this? Many cultures had myths about evil characters trying to devour the sun. This must be bad. This must be some kind of omen as we find ourselves in the dark. The Vikings believed that wolves ate it. The Chinese thought a dragon ate it. The Vietnamese thought a frog ate it. The Romans thought a demon devoured the sun. Whatever it was, the ancients believed that this was a bad omen. This was bad. It's dark. It was a sign of destruction to come. An eclipse of all things good. We can see that in the Bible. We can read in the Bible from the prophet Joel, for example. He warned that because people were turning from God, there would be a day of darkness and gloom where the sun and the moon would be darkened and the stars would withdraw they're shining. Darkness. But there's a big difference 
In the words of the prophet Joel, than from these myths of doom and gloom. For he was speaking of darkness inhabiting the earth because of locusts and covering the sun and creating darkness for the lands and destruction that would come because of the actions and the behaviors of people. And all food services and all nourishment would be gone. And all things good would be eclipsed. And so what Joel said to them, when darkness comes, people of God, what you do when darkness comes, and it will, what you do when darkness comes, the prophet said, blow the trumpet, turn on your cell phone, and make everybody hear the noise. When darkness comes, Sound the trumpet. Make a noise and point darkness out. Call evil evil, not just once, but often. And from the tallest hillside, from the mountain of Zion, blow the trumpet. And not just from the mountain, but tell your children. The prophet Joel said, tell your children about darkness. Tell them what wrong is and what wrong looks like and what hate is and what hate looks like and what evil is and what evil looks like and what darkness is. Blow the trumpet and tell your children so that their generation will know darkness from light and their generation's generation will know darkness from light. God makes a promise if you'll do this. If you'll sound the trumpet of light in darkness. If you'll stand and speak when you see evil. God makes a promise. And he makes it through the words of Jonah. He says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On your sons and your daughters. For they will continue to speak and prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions for the future. So speak. Blow the trumpet when you feel the eclipse of light by the darkness, as has been shared with us so beautifully already. That friend in the prison cell that doesn't believe there will ever be light again. For they find themselves in such a dark place that they, is there light anymore? That wife, that husband has left and she looks in the mirror and says, is it because of what I look like? Is it, is it my size? What is it? That person ravaged with disease and, and cancer and in a dark place and doesn't believe that there, there is, a, is light. Is there light? All that is good has been eclipsed. Is there light? And the prophet Joel and to the Old Testament said, sound the trumpet, there is light. There is light. And be sure your children know it and their children know it. And Paul, in the letter to Rome, in the church at Rome, to his friends, is saying, not when in Rome, do as the Romans do. He's saying, when in Rome, young church, my friends, those seeking Jesus, and who in the world is Jesus, hear the words, Jesus loves you. Hear the words, Jesus loves you. But go out into the streets. Not just sound the trumpet, but love. But love, so the dark can see the light that never goes away. Even in the darkness, the light never goes away. And so he asked of them to be genuine. That verse 9, that bridge verse between the two weeks of examining the 12th chapter of Romans, the letter to the church, the letter to you and me. Be genuine. Have a love for others That is real. The genuine article, not on airs, pretense, fake, put on, or a show, but genuine, real. He's calling them to be real. 
to be real. The genuine article. We often idolize, you and I, the way that relationships are supposed to work. <laughs> the Greek gods of love and Cupid with an arrow <laughs> in Paul's time. A magic, uh, getting caught with something or stuck with something. And love appears. Or TV or media and the, and the trite picture and glimpse of what love might be. Or we think it's supposed to look like. We buy the myth. We don't have to work on relationship. If it's hard, I don't want any part of it. So we think love must be easy. Everyone's supposed to get along, be nice, understand, agree. Especially if they think like I do. <laughs> but when that doesn't happen, when that doesn't happen, we get hurt. We get angry. We get disappointed. And so Paul is bringing them at the very beginning as they're asked to go love in the name of Jesus. To be as Jesus. He reminds him of reality. The reality that we don't always get along. The reality, and he says in the text that, that Karen read for you a moment ago. Evil almost, it, it seems like every other verse, but it was, it was verse 9 and 17 and 21. If he speaks of evil around us and how we are to confront that or to face that. It doesn't say go hide from it ever. <laughs> so how we are to go love when in Rome is where we live right now. Reality is that it's hard. Some relationships are wonderful. Some are not. Real reality realizes we can't force our behavior on someone else. Reality knows. Verse 18. For whatever is up to you, as much as possible for you, live in peace with each other. Paul doesn't stop it at real. He adds love. Not just genuine, but genuine love for others. You know fake when you've seen it, right? You know a forgery when you've seen it. You know pretend when you've seen it. Potters in the day of Rome... In Paul's time, as he shares with the church at Rome, there was pottery made that was fake. There was pottery made that wasn't genuine. It was the pottery that, as you tried to make it and form it and put it together, it broke or it would crack. And the person that wanted to put it into the marketplace to still be a good product, to sell, to, to make money, would put melt wax and warm hot wax to fill in the cracks and make it look genuine again. And it would sell, but boy... When it got on, and that pottery would face heat, the wax would melt. The crack would be revealed. And it wasn't useful. It wasn't genuine. And so Paul says, let your love be genuine and be real for a cover-up or forgery is never good enough. So genuine love doesn't change when the heat's on. Under the heat of fire, genuine love is revealed. And Paul says it this way, in being genuine, hate evil, cling on to what is good. Look for good in every relationship. Love never asks us to approve the inappropriate. But it does call us to know right from wrong good from evil, and to hold on to good. Paul doesn't just stay with be genuine and real and love. But he also says, forgive. Forgive. We all got cracks. We all got cracks. We've been family here for seven years now as, as pastor and friend and community of faith. Y'all know I got cracks. And when we continue to grow together and love one another and learn from each other as I learn from you and we keep discerning what is God's good and perfect will for us from this corner to love our world in every corner of the world. 
we must grab a hold of and know and acknowledge forgiveness. Do you want hot wax that just makes you look good? Or do you want forgiveness? Do you want forgiveness and grace that mends your cracks and puts you back together again and does make you genuine and real and forgiven and a vessel that can change the world? We spend so much energy and time on just repair, on band-aids, and on just getting fixed. And God wants to dose out forgiveness. And Paul asked us to do the same. Paul knew about, just before we, before we get too far from this, Paul knew about what it was like to be an enemy. So his words really mean something to me. He knew what it was to be an enemy. He was the enemy of the early church. He was the enemy of Jesus. He persecuted those that said, I want to follow God. He persecuted Christians, killed them. And so he knew enemy and had been an enemy. And so when he says, this is how you want to be genuine and love as God loved, and especially toward an enemy, this is what you need to do. And if you do this, it'll be like heaping hot coals on their head. And he says, what you do with your enemy is you forgive. You forgive. You forgive. They're hungry, you feed them. They're thirsty, you give them something to drink. You don't fight evil with evil or enemy with more enemy or noise or treat noise with lots of noise or just be louder to drown them out. But you, with forgiveness for the light is present even in the darkness Paul goes on to say that one of the human impulses in this walking out into the streets is revenge and the world says when in Rome do as Romans do when you've been hurt revenge is okay you got permission buddy they treated you bad have at it Taylor Swift, look what they've done to me. Look what they've done to me. The world gives permission, right? You treated me bad. You treated me bad. I got permission to treat you bad back. That's right, isn't it? You wouldn't think bad of me if somebody treated me really bad and I just let them have it. But Paul says, Paul says, you want to go on the streets? You want to be a little Jesus? You want to be church? You want to be community? You want to be revealing the light to a dark world? Let God handle the vengeance. Let God handle the vengeance. Let God handle the revenge. And it'll be like heaping hot coals on their head. So reality, genuine love, forgiveness he ends with be first <laughs> Paul says take the first step don't wait on the other take the first step as a community of faith as church in Rome and from and on this corner may we take the needed step with Paul with zeal with spiritual fervor to serve the Lord as the scripture says in Romans, by serving each other. We make the mistake when we focus on being a member. Paul talked about the church being the members of all the body, and we all have different gifts, and we're all different body members. We make the mistake when we focus, I'm a member, so that gives me rights and privileges. <laughs> I'm a member. I've been a long-standing member, so i got rights and privileges. We make a mistake if we focus on what the body is going to do for me. Paul says our focus needs to be on what's the body going to do for everybody else. It's good when we focus on being a member of the body in Christ and what we can do for the body. Jesus loves me, this I know, for God's word tells me so. A healthy church looks like that. Rejoices in hope, patient in suffering, persevering in prayer. Contributes to the needs of the saints 
and extends hospitality to the stranger. May that be so in our lives, my life, and yours this day. If you are just consumed and engulfed with darkness and can't see or believe that light exists, you're so overwhelmed that it, it feels like all that is good is being engulfed and eclipsed. Here, as Paul said, Jesus loves you. Be genuine in your love for one another. And know that's your purpose. And that God loves you just as you are. Let us pray. God, thank you for speaking to us through your word and through the song and music and this holy and special and precious place. And for all of us that have gathered for different reasons, in different moments in time and different days and stages and steps in our life, as we seek to be family and community, we ask and seek your blessing and your touch in your life. We hear your marching orders. We hear your challenge and your desire and plan and hope for us. As we seek a purpose for our own lives, may we know of your love and forgiveness and genuine passion for each of us. We ask all of this, God, as we seek to leave this place to go to the streets. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's stand and sing together a hymn of response, a hymn entitled The Servant Song, Seeking Ways of Serving Others as the community of faith, as members of the body. If you do not know Jesus, I'd love to have that conversation with you. And I'll be around at the front or around, the back, around, the, around this place following this time of worship together. Let's sing together. this another day to come to your house to worship we have such a freedom to do that Lord and I just thank you for that help us to do your will and to follow you in everything we do Father thank you for loving us so much that you made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins by sending your only son Jesus to die on that awful cross for us we're so unworthy of your great love, but we, you love us anyway. Forgive us when we fail to do your will. Father God, thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We give back to you now a portion 
with thankful hearts at this day. And that we we pray that it will be this gift will be given to you with hearts of freedom and desire, Lord, to do your will. Use it, Lord, to further your kingdom's work in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. so much for your presence today at First Baptist Church of Boone. Uh, you have encouraged me by your presence as we've worshiped God together. As we continue opportunities of training and, and growth in worship and worship experiences, parents of four and five-year-olds and first graders, your children are in the library, uh, and so learning what a book is. No, they're in the library, and I encourage you to pick them up there, and that'll help you as well. And Thank you for bringing them and being here with them, and uh, they see if worship's important to you, uh, they'll realize how important worship is uh, in their lives. Encourage you to pay attention to all the opportunities of fellowship, training, discipleship, and experience that are yours in the life of our church. Tonight, youth and parents have an Olympics kickoff ministry experience today at 5 o'clock. and encourage you all to be here uh, and enjoy that time together. May you go in peace being the genuine article, loving those around you. God bless you.